Praise the Lord, precious years. Praise the Lord. Today, um, I'm going to be talking about uh, one of my greatest, greatest, greatest failures as a as a Christian. Um, I came to the Lord officially in uh, 2010, August 29, 2010. I still remember this. Remember this till this day. Till this day, I even wrote it on a piece of paper. And then I put it on my wall where I was living. I no longer live in that place uh, there where I was living when I received the Lord. But that's what I did. And then I put it on a paper. And I think I wrote down that day or something. I received the Lord. And that day I got baptized. Because that was important to me. So um, so that's why I, I, that's why I put the note there. And so that's why till this day I remember my baptism date. I got baptized. My first baptism first official baptism uh, uh, by the Lord, um, uh, by the Lord, when I say by the Lord, I mean the, the right way, was in, was done in August, August 29th of 2010. And so, and so I came to the Lord and I repented of sin, I repented of my sexual sin, and so I did that, and then I went to fasting, I began to fast, um, uh, I, I read the Bible about fasting, and I started to do that. I started to seek the Lord, and of course, the Lord started to anoint me. And then one time, then I found myself going to different places, preaching the gospel. But before that, I was told by a, a random stranger that God was going to use me, uh, that there was a calling in my life, that he was going to use me as a preacher. But at that time, I was not born again. I did not come to Christ. I was still out there in the world doing my own thing. And so what the what the, that stranger had said to me, it came to pass uh, after I received Christ because I found myself preaching out there in the streets and on the bus, you know, just about in many places, really. I, I was preaching a lot in those days when I, was, when I just received Christ because I had a lot of fire. Um, when you first come to the Lord, that is like the golden times. The golden golden times and so I gained a lot of I gained a lot of um, a lot of uh, ground in, 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 in a lot of spiritual ground when I first came to the Lord and because I was fasting a lot I was doing I was fasting I was I was serious I was very serious about God I was not what would you I was not a, a laid-back Christian I took the word of God I was very serious you know, and, and I also had a personal relationship with God, meaning it's not just me listening to my pastor. You know, I also had my own. I always had my own relationship with God, meaning like I seek God for myself. I seek the Lord personally. You know, I had my own personal walk. In other words, I had a desire in me already that God had put in me for me to seek his face uh, on my own and personally. You know, so he can, so he himself, himself can come to me and reveal himself to me. You know, so I, I did these things and I even had a visitation, which I, I thought of one time to post on this channel, but I did not. But, um, but anyhow, um, anyway, how basically the, um, then, then there come a time the Lord gave me a dream uh, because at that time I was working in this job. And I was, um, I went to go and speak to a, a girl or something like that. And then I was flirting with her. And at that time I was a Christian. And, uh, and why would you, what you would say as a born again Christian? Anyhow, I was there doing that. And then I went to bed that same day. And I still remember what exact day it was. I don't remember the dates, but I remember what exact day of the week it was. Because that was serious to me. That was serious. That was serious. I remember it was a Thursday. It was a Thursday that I hear. I was having a dream, and then the dream just automatically stopped, like you would put a like like you would press a pause on a on a on a video or on a movie or something you watch anyhow. So, so the dream just stopped, and then all of a sudden I hear I hear a voice. I hear like a voice, but in the spirit, and then the voice said the, the I hear the message. The person said to me. You are not, you are not obeying my laws. That's what I heard. I heard you are not obeying my laws. That is exactly, that dream came on the same exact day 
that I went to flirt with this woman, with this girl at the airport. I think she was boarding a plane. She was about to get on a plane. And since I work in the airport, I was flirting with her. And that same day, the Lord came to me and I get I received this dream. So the Lord, I would say, love us so much that he will give us warning before a fall. He never not give a warning before a fall. So he gave me that warning. And he gave me other warnings as well, which I am not going to mention here. You know, because certain things is, is good not to share. But anyhow, um, there was other warnings that he gave me. And then, and then, but at that time, I was, uh, uh, the enemy was pursuing me. And it's like I didn't even know. It's, it's like even if I knew, it's like I didn't know. Because he was pursuing me, trying to get me to fall into sexual sin. But it's like I didn't know. And the thing is, I say this because, I, and the thing is, I remember, I remember that one day, one day because I used to preach so much, like around the trains, around the subways and stuff like that, there was one lady that said something to me. And then she said, we see you. And then she said, and she said something about, we're going to kill you or something like that. She said, so basically she said, we're going to get you, we see you. In other words, we see you preaching out there and, and, and you're disturbing us. So we're going to get you. So I, I, so that was somewhat of like a, a, a warning to me, but I know that warning is not from God. That's not a warning coming from the Lord. If you know, when you're preaching God's word. And then somebody come to you and say to you, I, we see you, we see you. And then that person is saying that we're going to take you down. You already know that's not the Lord. That's, that's, that's somebody else um, trying to destroy um, the work that you're doing for the Lord. So that's what happened. That's, that was the beginning. That was one of the things, signs that, let, that, that should have let, let, that should have let me know that the devil is, 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 is um, is following me, you know, is, is pursuing me to try to take me down. And so that was one thing. And then, and then uh, also, then uh, there came a time again, there came a time again now, I was speaking with my brother, and my brother is also a Christian. And we used to talk to each other about the Lord, about God's word. And then for us, and there was one thing that I said to him that to, to this day, when I think back about what I said, it was like, wow, I was like blind. I was like, my eyes was not open because of what I said to him that told me that my eyes was not open at that, uh, at that time to a certain extent. Because I told him something like to the extent where, where it's like I had overcome sexual sin. You know, when I talked to him and I was like, and I was talking to him, I was like, you know, because we were like worrying about other sins. When I was talking to him, we, we were not worrying about sexual sin at all. We was worrying about other sins. And so I, we was trying to overcome other sins that we had in our lives. So I was telling him something like, I'm not talking about sexual sin. Because at that time, I didn't think, I, was in, I wasn't thinking that I was in that. You know, I was concerned with other sins, overcoming other sins. So I was not, I kept my eyes closed to sexual sin. And yet the devil had a plan to take me down in sexual sin. And I kept my eyes closed on it and did not know that he had a plan to take me down. So I thought that I was fine and I had overcome sexual sin and, and, and it's, it's fine and good. And so that's how I was talking to my brother. And then one time uh, 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 there was somebody I saw. Then I disobeyed the Lord by going into flirting with this girl. And then one thing leads to another and then eventually I find myself falling into sexual sin. So, and then that changed my life completely. Ever since then, I could say if there's any regrets that I have as a Christian, as a servant of the Lord, that I would not, uh, that I would pray that nobody else have is that is um, I regret it. I regret to do this till this day, even though I had repented. Because I came out of sexual sin, I repented and everything, I did all of that. Even though I came out, I still regret to this day that I went to sexual sin. You know, of course I asked God forgive, for forgiveness and he had forgiven me and I repented and all of that. But 
that's one of the things that I wish that if I could go back, if I could go back, if I could go back to, if I could go back to my uh, past life um, when I first came to the Lord, if there's one thing I could have changed is that I would have changed. Um, I would have never gone to sexual sin. I would never gone because I see I lost a lot. Meaning, I had a lot of joy as a person. I remember when I was serving the Lord, worshiping the Lord, I had a lot of joy. Also peace also. I had those things. And then ever since I went to sexual sin, I lost that. And so I had to go and 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 uh, and fight and fight to to bear my ground again to to be restored. So that's one thing. Um I lost. And then and, and and so and also I also went through also I had received something also from the Lord also that um that I had received before going into sexual sin. And I would say it was an anointing. And so that's another thing as well that bothered me that that I should have never gone to sexual sin and probably if I hadn't I would have been farther along. In, in 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 Christianity, because it has always been, it has always been my desire, ever since I became a Christian, to be like the people in the Bible, not to be less. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't want to be any less than anybody. Any, uh, I don't want to be less. Less when I say less, meaning like, uh, I don't believe that as Christians, that that. To, that I don't believe that we should, we should be powerless Christians. That's what I'm saying. I don't believe in that. I believe that we worship God Almighty. That if we walk right with Him, when we pray, He will hear us. You know, if we live a holy life uh, and we worship the Lord and we do what is right, when we pray to Him, He will hear us. And, and I read Isaiah 59 where it talks about the Lord. You know, the reason He doesn't hear our prayers is because of our sins. You know, so I believe that if we are holy, for sure, if we pray for people, even for their healing, they may, they can be healed. I believe in that. I believe in that. And, and, and that's why I, I always seek for the Lord to anoint me, you know, whether it's for, for the healing anointing or whatever anointing, so for the Lord to use me so that more people can come to Christ. You know, more people to come, can come to Christ, you know, because a lot of times, you know, what can prove to people that you come from God is the anointing. You know, because a lot of times the anointing testify for itself. You know, the anointing testify for itself. And that's what separates you from everybody else. Because a lot of people nowadays preach the gospel, but they are with no power. You know, and so, and so, but the thing is that, is that there is, I do have some anointings though. Uh, maybe, probably I don't have, I do not have the healing anointing. Um, where I stand, um, but I do have other anointings, like the prophetic, the prophetic, I do have a prophetic anointing, and also I have the gift of tongues, I have maybe different anointings, like maybe I cannot share, <laughs> certain things I cannot share, because not everybody will understand, you know, everybody's not on the same level uh, 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 as Christians, if you say one thing to this person, they will end up, because they don't understand it, they can debate you. So that's what I find out a lot. I, I come across that in Christianity that it doesn't matter where I go, where you go, people will debate and fight you because they don't understand something. And then so sometimes I, now I'm learning to just let them be because let the Lord help them. Let the Lord explain things to them that they don't understand. You know? So I can't share everything. And I think it's wisdom for me not to share everything. You know, But what I can share, I will share. Um... Um, what I'm trying to share, what I'm trying to share right now is, is don't go to sexual sin, don't flirt, um, don't flirt because it leads to sexual sin. That's the that's the message. I regret that I did that. I flirt and went to sexual sin. So, don't be misguided by the devil, who's gonna make you think? Because when he try to make you think that oh, oh, flirting is 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 okay, or or I'm trying to make you think like it's okay to keep talking to this person that you have feelings for. All of that, uh, or the way you talk to some people, you know, certain things you say, which really you're not supposed to say, you say. Don't let the devil make you think it's okay, because certain things that you say is flirting. The way you talk to people sometimes, it could be flirting. 
So be careful with flirting because it leads to sexual sin because that happened to me. And I don't want nobody, I would, that, I would not want that to happen to nobody. Uh, nobody. I would not want nobody to go to sexual sin, whoever it is. Whoever it is, I would not want them to go to sexual sin because sexual sin destroys. It destroys the soul. It really takes you back. Instead of moving you forward, it takes you back in, in spirituality. It makes you less, less than what you really are. You know, even joy. If you had joy, you can lose joy. You can use a lot, lose a lot, lose a lot of things. Even salvation, if if you don't repent. So, um, don't go to sexual sin. It also kills anointing. It takes away anointing. It takes away a lot. And then once, and then once you're trying to come back to the Lord again, it's it's not easy. Sometimes, a lot of times, it's not easy to be restored because now you have to you have to leave. You have to break away from that person. And also, not only breaking away, you know, you have to do a lot of praying. You got you to get delivered from devils, from demonic possession that came via the sexual sin. Because when people go into sexual sin, they also get possessed by demons, by legions. You know, because they're, they're doing the ultimate no-no. They're breaking God's law by going into sexual sin. And uh, something that the Lord hates so much. And when anybody does that, uh, they're bound to receive a lot of demonic demonic visitations a lot of demons you know they're going to be possessed so i had to be delivered from all of these things as well you know so that's why to this day i think that i regret it i regret it and i know i would have been a better christian if i had never gone to sexual sin but thank god that i repented <laughs> thank god that i repented that i came out and 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 now it's time to prepare for the coming of the lord because he's coming very soon and there's another message that I wanted to preach. Um, again, like I said, this message is for those who will have ears to who will have ears to to hear. And I do understand not everybody will understand, you know, because that is scripture. The Bible talks about those the word of God is spoken, and the word is falling on some rough grounds. That means it's not all hearts that will receive this message. It's not everybody that's going to hear me and and receive what I'm saying. And and a lot of times. I know what I'm talking about. A lot of times it's the Lord speaking through me. And I'm somebody, uh, if I don't share a lot of things, you're not going to know a lot of things that, that happened with me, with my relationship with God. If I don't share it, you're not going to know. So a lot of things I'm telling you, I preach here on this channel, is something that I've experienced or it's in the Bible or both. You see? So, and I do have an anointing. When I say an anointing, meaning like I do have an anointing that proves to me that the Lord walks is walking with me. Like the prophetic anointing. I have a prophetic anointing. I can say that because I do have it. And I can't take it away because God already gave it to me. And I can't deny it either because God already gave it to me. You cannot deny what you have. If you have something, you can't say I don't have it. It's like if somebody puts something in your house. You have a bottle of water in your house. And it says, um, it says Poland Spring. And somebody comes to you and says, do you have Poland Spring in your house? You can't say you don't have Poland Spring in your house. If you know you have Poland Spring. So I have Poland Spring in my house. Not Poland Spring like physically, but you know, I do. I mean the Poland Spring I'm talking about. The, 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 I'm talking about the prophetic anointing. I have that. I can see things before they happen. God will show me. And many times, uh, uh, many times I have visions. And then I, see, I will see things before they happen. Things in my workplace. Things in the church. Depends on what church I go to. Whatever. I've gone to different churches. God will show me things in those churches also. When I go there, when I go to that church, I will see things that's going to happen in a Sunday. I will see it sometimes. A lot of times I don't share, you know, because nowadays people don't understand. A lot of people in Christianity don't understand. That's just how it is. And there's nothing I could do about it because the people just got to get their levels up. As far as the anointing, they just have to get closer to the Lord. And there's nothing I can do about that because everybody's on their each individual level. And I can't do nothing about that. So what I can say to you is, um, to whoever's listening, is that, um, yes, there is, um, there is personal relationship with God. Strive to have a personal relationship with God where God is speaking to you individually, where he's showing you things. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit showing you things, how are you going to know everything that you need to know? You can't. Because there's a lot of things that you could experience in life. There's a lot of things that could be happening in life that you need to understand, that you need to know, okay, is this right or wrong? 
if the and then and then you could look for the answer, you might not find it nowhere. So the answer you're gonna get get it from the Holy Spirit. So that's why you always gotta make sure you have that personal relationship. Because when you have the personal relationship, then the Holy Spirit will come to you and show you. Like for example, if I have something in my house that I'm not supposed to have in the house, the Holy Spirit will come and I'll have a vision. He will show me. You know, so like if I'm doing something, even though I could be doing something, eventually, if it's wrong, the Lord will show me that what I'm doing is wrong. So that's a personal relationship because God Himself teaches me. You know, um, that's actually in the Bible. The Bible, it's in the Bible where what the Bible itself tells you, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will teach you that you don't need to have many teachers. You don't need to have many people teaching you the Word because the Holy Spirit Himself will come to you and teach you. You know, if you have Him. If you have a relationship with him by repenting of sin and, and living a, a prayerful lifestyle and fasting. So that's what I think is missing uh, a lot in, in church today. Um, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is missing. Um, also prayer. People don't pray as they should. And I think we need to pray um, like Jesus had done in, in Geth Gethsemane. Uh, he prayed for like an hour long. And that's when he was about to face a very big trial, which was um, the dying for our sins, the suffering that he was about to go through. For him to be able to, to stand and go through it, he prayed for an hour. And then he was trying to get the other disciples to pray with him too, but they um, they obviously was too tired. But that's the time they were supposed to overcome their tiredness, overcome the exhaustion and say, Lord, we'll do it for you. you know. Uh, but they didn't do it. Obviously, they did not understand. Every time God tells us to do something, we don't do it. It means we don't understand, you know. Because if they really understand the, the 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 reason behind this prayer, the one hour prayer, then they would have done it. They would have done it. The Lord was trying to get them to do that one hour prayer. The one hour prayer is very powerful. It's very powerful. I do it, uh, you know, and I would I would encourage other people to do it because you can get a lot from it. Uh, through it, you can receive anointing. The Lord will anoint you more and more the more you keep doing it. Through it, you know. I would say, let me say this, a man is only as big as his prayer, li as his prayer life. You can never be bigger than your prayer life. The, the more, the stronger you are in the spirit, the more you can pray. The weaker you are in the spirit, the less you can pray. So that's why sometimes when you find yourself not able to pray, you say if you try to do a one hour prayer, you find it hard. That means you're, spiritually you're still weak. You still, you still need some strength. You need, you still need to be stronger. You know, for you to stand, because you, because Praying for an hour is being in the presence of the Lord for an hour. That's what it means. The longer you're there, the more time you spend in the presence of God. And the more time you spend in the presence of God, the more God, the more um, God, you know, uh, do his work on you, what he's doing. Because you have to present yourself before the Lord for him to work on you also. So the more you stay in his presence, the more work he does on you. And this, is, this has to do even with your salvation. Because when you stay there for an hour long praying, guess what? The Lord is there helping you, uh, purifying you, purifying your heart, washing you, washing your sins away, um, anointing you, filling with His Holy Spirit, doing all the things He has to do to make you ready for the rapture. And so this is about the rapture. Praying for a long time is also about the rapture. And Jesus, when He prayed for an hour long, guess what it was about? It was for our salvation. Because it, it was for our salvation. It's to save humanity. It's to save humanity. He prayed for an hour long because he had to go and die for our sins so that we can be saved. Do you see the, the, the do you see the secret behind an hour? Praying for an hour? You know, so it's good to do that three times a day, pray three hours a day. It's very good to do that. There's a testimony of of um of that I, I plan to so I was thinking to post on this channel about this this prayer, this kind of prayer, and how beneficial it is, how powerful it is. Um, so if God allowed me to, I would post it, you know, just to help those who are willing to to um to grow more in Christ, go more in in the Spirit, and and not be and not be just just stagnant Christians, you know, because there's nothing worse than being a stagnant Christian. Then you feel dry. You know, you don't feel like you, you don't feel like you, you, you know you you're gaining ground 
Sometimes you want a visitation. You don't feel like you're getting visitations. You all, like when you're born again, you always want more from the Lord because you can never have enough of Jesus. You always want more. So that's why it's always good, you know, when you find something new, uh, as, like, you know, when you find a new revelation, like the one I just spoke about right now, praying for an hour, three hours a day, each one an hour long, you know, when you find something like that, jump on it. Jump on it. It's going to help you. You know, look, Jesus did it, you know. So you can say, oh, if you say, oh, this is his, 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 his thing. Well, it's not my thing because you can find it in the Bible. Jesus did it. And he was trying to get his disciples to do it. You know, that's what I'm trying to get you to do. You know, he was trying to get his disciples to do it, but they were too tired. That means they were weak, weak in the spirit. That's why they couldn't do it. You know, so uh, may the Lord bless you. Uh, shalom.